So thanks for having me. I'm talking um, on behalf. Um, I'm very proud uh, uh, for for the other two guys over there. It's, um, you probably have heard or read uh, some of the papers. Um, um, I'm part of this research group, and uh, I'm trying to um, outline a little bit about one tiny part of our research and artistic work from the past three years. So the outline uh, would be, uh, of course, a short introduction of the field of problems um, I'm, I'm encountering for quite a while now as a composer. Then the, the question why we should use a typology in a, in a world that we actually liberated uh, uh, from uh, on, on any kinds of um, um, borders, some people might think. And um, then uh, some notes on interdisciplinary listener-based research. Interdisciplinary work is a buzzword nowadays and uh, you can uh, easily get a professorship if you uh, herald this. Uh, uh, well, uh, enter uh, uh, the space uh, with interdisciplinary work. The problem is that it hurts. And I'm going to talk about uh, how it hurts because you have to lose something uh, before you actually can work together. And specialists are actually uh, not uh, very pr um, good in losing something before they start working together. Um, that's actually the part of the problem um, that uh, if you work together in interdisciplinary groups, engineers have a completely different language than artists. But um, the question is, what are we actually talking about then um, for years? And um, okay, then a uh, short introduction on a paper that I uh, introduct, uh, introduced uh, two years ago at the same conference, and uh, then a short um, uh, idea of um, yeah, how, how we could do it and how we can uh, talk about stuff if we want to talk. Um, okay, uh, the electric music hosts two diametrically opposite cultures. One side with find X, uh, we find the X exact sciences. Yeah, so uh, acoustics, informatics, engineering, and all of which define conditions of sound production, the very instrument of executing and compositional design. And these exact sciences are working on Cartesian space. Cartesian space is, of course, absolutely fundamental for all we're talking about. So ambisonics, wave field synthesis, all these buzzwords was actually not, of course, what the listener is working with, or the perception of a listener is not at all Cartesian. Um, uh, the other side, we find culture of music appreciation by the ear, first of all by the audience, but secondly by the artists working in this field, because we are not only working in visual representation, I have to come back on visual representation later on, um, well, we're working with our senses, and uh, that makes uh, a huge problem here. Scientific discourse seeks to eliminate ambiguity in its terminology at, and definitions. Of course, yeah, we need certain definitions. We need very precise definitions when uh, it comes to uh, scientific discourse. Whereas an artistic discourse would, on the contrary, often seek to be as polyvalent as possible, suggesting a network of meanings or implications. It's the common situation if you sit at a table, engineers and artists, yeah, uh, the artist is always trying to describe something around uh, the subject, uh, quite often, uh, because the, the entrance to, to, to the table is completely different, whereas uh, this, um, the scientific part of the working group is always saying, okay, we, we have these traditional papers and we know exactly what's happening here, there and there and the rest we're still working on. So how can we, how can we bring this together? So <clears throat> if it comes to the compositional side, well, two questions to me. What does the composer actually know about the perceptive cap uh, capabilities of the audience? So we have all this uh, fancy software, we can place a sound here and there, make trajectories and all this kind of stuff. But do we know that the audience is going to hear it there? Besides the fact that somebody once invented something that is called the sweet spot. So very, it's not an artistic uh, concept actually. Uh, or more specifically, what does the composer know about the perceptibility of his spatial sound compositions? Yeah. So. Uh, some people might have been residents here and you can work here in these beautiful studios 
uh, and then you go to the um, Cubus and listen to your piece there, but um, you never actually get an idea, uh, or, well, you can, but it's because of time constraints and other constraints, uh, it's really hard uh, if, if some, to talk about uh, what's going on there later on if you want to be uh, uh, kind of more or less, or uh, get the self an experience as a composer, what's going on over there, there or there. It might be not interesting because art is art. Art doesn't have any purpose if it's, yeah, first of all. It might have purpose then in second order to some people. But what I'm talking about is not something that should be considered for someone who's doing his first composition in space. But after a while, uh, if you really want to in introduce space and spatial aspects, so the constitution of space, not the fixed spaces as we uh, had a subject before, um, you might be interested in something more specific so that your vocabulary, not only talking about it, but how you deal with sound, with machines and the concept of spaces, uh, you, might be, uh, you might reassure a little bit uh, that is actually going on out there. And you know, just like John T. Harrison once said, throwing around sounds when it comes to visual, um, specialization or um, yeah, immersion. <laughs> um, so what's the research object? Uh, for my part, it's the shared perceptual space as a concept that we introduced a couple of uh, years ago, the common space of perceptions in 3D audio. And you, and it's, there's nothing more written on there. It's just idea that we can um, uh, work on the blurred edges of space of perceptions. So the engineers have completely different uh, perceptions, what's going on. In, in spaces. When I was working in, uh, uh, in, at Ilmenau in 2005 for wave field synthesis, I was explaining all kinds of stuff that is possible with the system. And I was there with a colleague, and it was very hard to recognize what they were talking about. Um, <clears throat> I'm not saying that it's not working, but it's a different kind of perception. And so artists have, uh, or sound artists have a very different, very different way of listening because of the background, uh, because of the way they, they are thinking about stuff. And of course the audience, and we can switch. Yeah? Sometimes the engineer uh, is in the position of, a, uh, of the audience and, uh, and the audience becomes in more, uh, if kind of, it depends how we work uh, in, in the field. So if, if the audience can um, walk around, uh, they actually become kind of composition, uh, composers. So, the question is, how can we bring this together, or is there a possibility to think about this more in concrete? So, there are always basic research questions in 3D environments, and I'm just picking out this. Can we verbalize the spatial sound phenomena that we produce? Yeah? Everyone is working in, the, everyone working in the studio after a while, working on a kick drum, and it's giving it a name. It's not only the kick drum, it's the, the monster or something like that. Yeah? So, um, and if it comes to space and spatial phenomena, yeah, I have students, that they're standing there and they, they do something like that. Yeah? Quite kind of sculptural thing. Yeah? And you think, okay, how, what do you mean? Do you mean this thing or this thing? Yeah? So can we, can we bring this a little bit further? So uh, the idea of verbalizing uh, uh, sound phenomena is not only, for me, not only uh, restricted to only one field. It, might work, uh, it should work in the end, here, here, here where we're sitting there tonight. Uh, and we, were, we are using uh, um, uh, that guy uh, that you were probably listening to last night. Um, and uh, we're doing this in this research group. And the f uh, interesting thing is that we are really sitting at one table, four engineers and one composer and supervisors for four years. Um, and we, we, in the beginning, it was ac actually the problem of understanding each other's language. Uh, I'm only um, doing this very brief because this is part of the workshop tomorrow and we've published this several times. Uh, but we're using this thing and we use beam form, beam forming so you can actually uh, uh, beam sound into different directions. Um, I'm working with architects on this uh, concept of fluid architecture exactly with this thing because you can actually activate uh, 
um, architectural space by that. Or you can actually, of course, um, work with reflections uh, uh, towards the listener. As you can see here, we have a sweet spot problem, and it's not a problem we are getting rid of the sweet spot. There is no concept like that in just in this. But we, of course, trying to understand the fields in which perception produces similar phenomena. So why verbalization? Um, we published this paper uh, last, at the last conference. I'm just going to uh, 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 briefly through, through the ideas we were, we're dealing with. So first thing is we just took a part of composition of mind and asked people, uh, how many objects do you hear without telling them what objects are? Uh, how would you describe them and where do you hear them in the room? It was very interesting to see how, how similarly people described the several aspects. And sometimes, it's of course, it's just like something is crackling and then you, you say, yeah, it's, it's kind of grainy, something like that. But it's, it was a start to understand how people actually approach yeah, uh, spatial compositions. This is, of course, now in the frequency range, but we ask, um, you, people start sc uh, sketching things, yeah? distances, directions, trajectories. And this was really interesting because it, it's very, was very different to what I did in my composition. And um, the, the, then we were working on this uh, for quite a while, and we had these two computer music uh, journal articles in last year, and this is the first one where we share, uh, where, um, um, publishing what I'm going to talk about now, the sculptural aspect of sound. Um, here you have a, a short line. It's not complete, of course. I know that. Uh, you, 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 will, you will all miss your heroes, probably. But um, I did this research on, uh, on these guys to understand actually where verbalization actually appeared. That was very interesting for my work. And you see from the very beginning, yeah, Russolo had these six categories of sound. Yeah? So he was building these machines. Wherever in history people were building machines uh, for producing sounds, they actually started uh, about verbalizing categories and they started actually to, to, to find a system behind it. Um, most of the time it didn't work, and that's very interesting. Uh, um, you, of course, I'm it. Uh, and, um, we're not going through this, it's all in, this, in the paper from two years ago. Very interesting is that uh, Smalley 2007, that's only two, 10 years ago, uh, published space form that probably every one of you knows. And it's a, uh, Georgina Bond called it a tour de force of terminology. So he produced all kinds of words, right? I think over 30, 30 uh, uh, words for, for spatial descriptions. And the problem is none of them are listener based is all a subjective description. We have a problem here. We have very good authors, and they all describe yeah, their sound phenomena. I'm not talking about, all of them are not talking about a space. That's not true. Uh, I pick up Smalley here, and, and, and then my hero down there, my hero's down there. And uh, because he, uh, it just, it, it's, there seems to be a will to describe spatial uh, entities, but if you, and you have to start with your own experience, but we don't know about the others. Yeah? We know that space is a construction, and we, it's very hard to say in a, in a, in a spatial composition how people, uh, different people construct the space. So Smalley, uh, Smalley tries, but he's actually, and we, we don't get any listening examples. Yeah? That's a problem. Solfege, the Solfege by Schaeffer is with listening examples. That's very, very, very helpful but uh, not a lot of people have actually have it at home. Um, and only, only Nystrom at the end of them, probably, it's probably until 2013 the most important PhD in this field, the typology and uh, spatial textures, um, gives us listening examples so that we actually can think about, uh, are we talking about the same? Or is it just on paper? You know, all these nice graphics of distances, trajectories, yeah? When I know, if, you, if, you, if you paint a trajectory from here to here, yeah, it's, it's on a piece of paper. It's not working like that with any kind of material, sound material. It's different kind of materials to different shapes in space. Yeah? So we need I mean, all these examples 
uh, my opinion, uh, uh, to get closer to what I call a shared perceptual space. So three, three points, interdisciplinary, intersubjective and listener-based. Uh, uh, we need these aspects for verbalization. Very important here. It's not about finding definitions to, for new archetypes. I don't want to force people to listen exactly what I, what I experience. This is not part of the artist. This is not art. Yeah? I don't want force, uh, to force people to say, ah, it's really all, always there. But in between, yeah, that we find, to sagen, uh, so to say, uh, descriptions, sorry, uh, for a different supply in this field. Yeah? So if you, if you work in this field for quite a while, you start to repeating yourself. And that's exactly the point where you can start, of course, or you can try to understand much more about what you did in the past. And this is actually uh, 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 a try. This is uh, uh, from Ozil, my, my, uh, the, the whole scheme, how we worked. And you could see, and when I'm talking, the, the upper part is part of the workshop tomorrow, but we started with miniatures, very small stimuli. Uh, they went through the listening pro, uh, test process, then they come to the analyst, and there's this reflection, and then you, you build on that uh, more complex uh, spatial uh, 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 descriptions in sound or with sound. Uh, so we are thinking about sound as space, not sound in space. Uh, spe uh, spatial composition is a space, at or uh, not in a place, at a place. Um, yeah, and, and so what's basically going on there, you have a, a laboratory, you have the eco and you have a flat screen and um, you play stimuli and uh, people can place with a finger where it's coming from for, for one thing or how the trajectory in their uh, perception is uh, going from A to B, or uh, different positions. So first uh, verbalization for us was a hierarchical model that we could agree on uh, from very si uh, simple things. Static stimuli, so directions, time variant, so trajectories, and, and the first one, uh, first two, sorry, are very easy for engineers, yeah, because that's actually what they're mostly working on. The problem is, if we put them together, we get, we get morphed in space. And there's, there will never be, in my opinion, never be a graphical or uh, a, a visual uh, representation of what's going on in plane three. Because this is all in perception. Ah, all in perception. So you get all the results, and, uh, and I don't want to force you into this, but uh, this is, for example, all the, all the positions of, of di uh, dir directed beams, uh, uh, people were actually pinpointing on the, on the screen. And you can see these are different materials. This, are, uh, this is uh, uh, noise with long onsets, long offsets, that's a noise bursts. Uh, the crosses are crackles. And we learn that uh, although people say, okay, it's coming from there or it's towards that direction, they place the, the angles and the, the, uh, the um, distance to the loudspeaker uh, uh, very differently when it comes to different materials, uh, sound materials. And we ex can, of course we can explain this, but it was actually a starting point. Um, so, uh, for example, here you can see that uh, if you make a, a, a full circle uh, with, a, with a beam and you uh, put in in the same rotation, different materials, people listen to the mark different shapes. So yeah, on the screen, you have a perfect circle in your software. I'm not, I'm not naming them all, but it's not, going on in, it's, uh, it's not going on in perception. You have a morph here, yeah? yeah. Wherever, whatever system you use, I know I have enemies here because of that, but one, we have to start talking about this. So where's the sculpture coming from? I was, I was using the scu word sculpture in my work for quite a while and asked myself, why? And then I find, okay, Bayless were using it, but do I repeat what Mr. Bale is saying? Or uh, uh, Ilkam has this audio sculpt software. There, there's the word sculpt in there. So there are many composers and within the last 100 years you use the word sculpture. So, but as we know, in fine arts, the, the terminology sculpture is so broad nowadays. So why should we, in sound art or in music, use a word that is not even well defined where it's coming from? Well, 
body-space relation is something that I found. Body and space <coughs> is, uh, uh, ex in, in sculpture theory, is something that is very old. And they have these archetypes, uh, and we produce stimuli on them. And I'm not playing them now, I'm playing them tomorrow in the workshop. And there are two concepts. So artists seem to have, and their audience, uh, a very ex uh, deep experience through the through hundreds of years how actually they they build space or relate with architectural space uh, in different kind of arch um, settings and they call it body space relation first of all it's a kernel plastic with the attribute superseding there are variations like open mass volume of a kernel plastic space consuming Spatial plastic, the second concept, is called space binding or space encompassing as attributes. So I go through this because uh, uh, the third one is kernel shell principle. So that you have something that's more outside and something in the middle. And because of the relationship of the kernel and the shell, you actually produce this tension where perception is actually producing space. Um, we were working on this with uh, listening experiments and people were actually able with very sim simple stimuli to skin of course we didn't tell them hey, this is kernel or this is something but they were just uh, able to distinguish between uh, these um, concepts and so we came up with this tableau of uh, terminology that we're using now and I'm teaching uh, at the same time I'm not forcing students to use it but it's just an introduction so that we can actually work on this to have an orientation what's going on in the composition and a uh, loudspeaker environment. Um, wow. So and this latest one, um, I'm, uh, uh, this, we, we did this on Monday. Uh, so it's not, uh, this is uh, the lab uh, uh, we are, we are uh, working in Berlin at the moment, the hybrid lab. And there, there's the eco. And <clears throat> I, I, I was playing. Um, some um, other uh, stimuli to, to, to the students um, uh, because there are other aspects that you can derive from um, theory, uh, from sculptural theory. You see the same texture, spatial texture here. Nistrum would call this a spatial texture. And you have different aspects, angles, views on this. And one feature of aspect is contour. So you you, you listen to a sound mass, so to speak, or a kind of a plastic uh, uh, sur yeah, surrounding a, a stream of sound. And it depends where you're standing in the space and you get a different, of course, of coloring and uh, directivity and so, uh, a different contour. Or, and that's the funny thing about uh, spatial audio, you can have a texture and you turn it. That's so. Yes, that's what we did yesterday in the concert. It was a fixed audience, but the texture was turning. We could also, of course, compose uh, in a way that uh, the people can walk around. That's more in installation. But I'm, I'm not really uh, distinguishing anymore uh, between uh, installation and concert. But of course, one can do it. And the second uh, term is uh, Gerichtetheit, so directed awareness. That's, uh, so you, if you take a, a classic sculpture, at the same time you have different directions and by that the sculpture, like Rodin did this, he, he was talking about a lot about this, you, uh, you direct the, the perception of it. So how, how actually uh, you try to grasp what's going on. Yeah? And this is actually, if you have a sound mass in space, and it's, it's scanning or there's something floating through it or of course all in, t in time, but this is the smally thing, uh, time in the service of space here, um, in this kind of environments, uh, your, your, direction, uh, your, your uh, perception is directed towards several features of what's going on uh, with space. And relief, relief is, a two d is the 2D uh, uh, thing between um, uh, the spatial um, plastic and, and the picture, the 2D. And in relief, there's the word plastic, uh, plasti plasticity, uh, where you have this staging of different uh, mater materiality or uh, uh, yeah, coordinates uh, in, 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 in the deepness of, this, of the spatial thing. And uh, I'm not going through, through this um, completely with you, but 
it, it seems that that actually people uh, from from uh, uh, from my group uh, were actually very very good <laughs> in distinguishing uh, um, the stimuli uh, stimuli uh, uh, in 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 the um, amount of, for example, Gerichtetheit or amount of contour, comparing always two different stimuli. I'm just it's uh, later on, it's, it's, but it's interesting after after a while that um, that you, that you see or experience that um, uh, that audiences actually are by by by, um, by not training them, but uh, giving examples are actually uh, getting much better in in their their way of describing uh, or distinguishing uh, spatial relations and spatial formations. Another aspect I was talk uh, I, I just mentioned is uh, normally engineers would say you need a group of people who've never ever listened to the stimuli before stimuli before or you do this with trained people. Well, I think. Uh, training is kind of something very important in, in, the, in the whole field because we're always talking, uh, if you go to a concert, yeah, uh, you have different levels of, uh, of pro approaching like let's say a symphony or something and uh, we really have to think that um, uh, it's, it's not of, for me of any worth that we try to build systems or compositions that can be uh, easily, uh, of course, adapted or percep uh, percepted by everyone. Yeah? Not saying I'm not interested in, in certain people, but it's really question of uh, always a question: whom I'm talking to or who's talking to me. Yeah? So uh, engineers are people who are actually in spatial audio um, and integrate this, of course, in any kind of uh, composition. So for and this is the last slide. Hey, um, so actually that was uh, uh, yesterday when we when we uh, uh, tried to rehearse uh, uh, next door. Uh, in the end, uh, every composition I think in a three D uh, sounding environment. Uh, uh, I'm not talking about immer immersion, um, but uh, mediatized or media. Uh, re um, Media, re yeah, me media related spaces by loudspeaker. Uh, whatever, whatever we do, <clears throat> we, we we work with kind of typolo typology, and by that we always derive a certain uh, spatial relations. And I think it's it's very interesting to think about the words we're using and work on the words as well as on the compositions. Not as well, much more on the compositions. But the aim of what we go, could be that, of course, in the end, we come up with much more subtle results yeah, uh, that direct us uh, in our work and our, with working with our ears in these environments uh, towards areas where we actually wouldn't enter uh, without this kind of uh, more sublime uh, way of uh, talking to each other. So thank you very much. Okay, we still have time for questions. Okay, um, please, thank you very much for your, for your talk. Uh, I have a, a number of questions, but let me start with my first one. You were making up, in the beginning, you were making up a kind of strong difference between technological discourse, no scientific discourse, and technological or engineering discourse. As, no, artistic, sorry. Um, scientific and artistic discourse and that they have to be brought together. I think that was one of the initial slides, right? Yeah. Okay. So but isn't that a bit too, you know, to to antipodical thought because we still have the scholarly discourse. We have cultural studies, we have um, humanities, we have um, art uh, studies in, in general, we have musicological studies, we have sound studies now, and especially sound studies, we're just inventing yeah, when we started that. That's the problem. Um, we were invented in order to bridge this discourse, in order to draw from the scholarly plus from the artistic plus from the scientific side a discourse which where this, what you want to, to have, 
Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. I'm still waiting for the results. Finish. Yeah. You're waiting for the results. Okay. So, please, what is your critique then? Why is this, this comedy discourse not part of your dialogical or of your discursive model? Oh, it's always there, of course. But um, um, I'm not saying. I'm just. It was uh, in the the. I think in the end I brought this together because um, I, I was showing all these musicologists or composer musicologists or engineer musicologists, composers, or so we all have nowadays this multiple, um, yeah, I don't know, multiple uh, souls. Uh, yeah, I know. I, I, just, I, I, I just wanted to uh, start with a prob problem. Of course, there are the, the this courses. Of course, in musicology, lots of things going on, especially in sound studies. But um, for me, uh, it's it's always the problem that if you work uh, in, if you go deeper into media art, so working with 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 the machines and trying to get not only to use the the surfaces. Uh, I was talking a lot about. Uh, the soft, not uh, yeah, hinting to towards all kinds of softwares we're using, maybe Max or or Ableton or what? Oh, I said it. Uh, all this, uh, I have no contract. Uh, <clears throat> still, um, so uh, and that's all. This the surface of it, and it's very hard to, uh, for example, in musicology or sound studies, uh, to. I know that there's this try to. to there's always this this attempt to, to go deeper, but in the end you really need, I think, um, uh, discourse with, with the hardcore engineers. And, and they are not so very interested, I mean, they, they would say I'm interested in musicology, but they don't spend many time for that, because they have completely different careers. And this is a mere fact, I mean, you can, it's not done by uh, uh, inv inviting um, uh, one of these two guys whom I, I, I just mentioned to a talk, and uh, you have to live with them. Yes, but you know, I think this is possible. Uh, I give you an example. All right. Um, I give you an example. I have been working for many decades uh, in the artistic production of uh, a German public radio. Yeah, yeah. And there, uh, it, there you have that. Yeah, you have these engineers which are not totally tech freaks and, and go in, back into their shell, but they are really participating in the ongoing production. But of course, I, uh, I, I think you're right. This has to develop and this has to be built up. This is nothing which just comes up when you just slip with your finger and want to, to, to have it happen. Yeah, and I, and I agree with you that it's, I mean, I start very harsh, but just I just wanted to bring it together in this line, in this fine line of, of publications we have so far, and it's of course not. Uh, not everything, but um, I just I think it's something we we feel very strongly if we if we listen to certain pieces. Some are actually you can hear that some compositions are made by someone who's a very good programmer and has a very good pr uh, background in engineering. And then you can listen to pieces where you understand okay, this is someone who has a completely different approach, and uh, it's all good for me to me, but. I think uh, after a while you actually want to not only bridge this but gain all this experience from both sides and for that you, I, I think we need, uh, we need a kind of um, wording because we have so different backgrounds talking about things. Yeah? Directivity for an engineer is com so completely different. A signal. A signal yeah. for artists is something different than a signal. Ze yeah. Yeah. Also, yeah. So, yeah. Okay, um, considering the time, I would uh, allow one more question. So I'm, I wasn't, or if it's a short one, we can also have two, it's okay. So maybe you start in the front. Uh, <clears throat> okay, I want to talk uh, about these two different kinds of terminology because for me, I, I, I kind of disagree a bit that we don't need the technical, not we don't need, but it's a good idea to blend things together. But there's one thing the technical termination, the terminology, like for example, in film, when we talk about editing or montage or lighting or all these kind of things, we have technical terminology. So it's something we have here too, I think, in composition, because we're talking about technical processes. So no, we're not talking about technical processes. No, no, no. yeah, yeah. I mean, but there is Sorry. one perspective of terminology about space that is technical, and we can talk about it technically. And then there is one that is more about conceptually mm. the composition process where. 
we go beyond like the the, the technical terminology like movement, uh, localization, diffusion, pace of movement, and, and all these kind of things. Um, and my question is, pedagogically, how can you bring these things together? Because from one hand, you think about the composers, and so you educate people methods of composing, and then you're thinking about the audience, hmm. the listeners, and you, as, as I understand, you, you create this kind of terminology of sculpture and contour and these kind of things. You kind of blend this perception of the composer and the listener. But, um, I, yeah, I, I know that's, of course, um, that's the question I ask myself every day when I'm teaching. Well, first of all, I think there's no, I don't, I don't really understand uh, nowadays a concept of teaching composition. It's very, of course, we have our classical roots, but um, it's very, it's very hard. I mean, if you if you have people who come from the classical background and then do two courses on specialization or something, yeah, of course you hear where they're coming from. And if something someone starts with loudspeaker music and environmental uh, art and, and all this, and does specialization, um, it's it's a completely different approach with working with the material. So. The, the the choice of material is first is a, is a real problem, and then on top, I'm coming here and saying, okay, we need we need wording for uh, for spatial phenomena. It's 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 very hard to tell. Uh, I I offered this sculptural terminology uh, and on a plate to several people, and they started using it, and I'm still waiting for the result. Uh, sometimes it works. I just um, I think. I think we should really try um, whatever terminology, terminology we use. If we go into VR, or we are in the middle of VR, <clears throat> and we are not want to do the same architectures again, so like cages on staircases and so, or same kind of mus music we did before, uh, then it's very hard, and that's actually what's happening for a long time in, 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 in loudspeaker environments. If you're not doing um, a thunderstorm or reproducing a, a, an orchestra, then it's very hard to say what's going on there. And I just wanted to uh, kind of encourage myself and then later on work with other people on, 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 on this question. What is this dark, warm or matter that's working there? Hmm? Okay, so if it's a quick question, yeah, just go ahead. Um, so, I thank you, I enjoyed your talk very much. Um, Thanks. And I'm interested that in the sculptural analogies you're often talking about, uh, for instance, trajectories uh, through, the, through the space or, or directing attention, for instance. And yet it seems to me that the materiality of the sonic space that you proposed at the beginning, that the, that the sound is the space, you know, hey, um, that the material in those sculptures gives rise to certain form that wouldn't take place with other materials, for instance. And so I wonder how the, the, the descriptions you're giving seem external to the sound in a way to me, like the trajectories and so on. And I wonder to what extent you're thinking about the way in which the material itself gives rise to certain form within the space. As, as something that's inherently a property of the material. Thank you. That's a very, very good question. I'll make it short. Uh, I, 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 uh, I'm working with two, two words, uh, two, two terms, terms here. Uh, uh, specialization first and second order. And first order for me is in the material itself. So if we are talking about spatial composition, uh, Producing, I'm not saying designing, I hate the word design in this context, the, uh, producing sound material actually is uh, specializing uh, first order because where in, in fre frequency wise we play something high, middle or down there. Bass for most people is always down there. Yeah? So, uh, and then we have second order uh, specialization and then we go to the plane, so far, near, close. Uh, with trajectories, and so it's it's of course it's not only we don't it's not only where we place something in space by any kind of software or putting a loudspeaker there. It's a very very um, good um, 
thing to do. Um, but uh, it's the way we, with a, we choose our producing our sounding material that actually starts the specialization process. And by that I would call it's actually the beginning, the, the, the forming of the sounding textures, actually the beginning of the sculpture process. Uh, so if yes, yesterday you might you might have heard uh, in, in a concert of uh, uh, it was something like 11k, a uh, very high frequency sound, and you can't place it there. And but you, for that you don't need a speaker over there. Uh, you, you you just play 11k and it's always above. And by that you would actually, in a sculptural way, you know, draw something very high. Or you could say. It's, this is the ceiling of my the space I'm creating. This very this 11k, and then you throw in the uh, the very deep 60 hertz whatever, and then you have the base of the space, the fundament. That, that's the way of thinking. It's only a mindset. 